Hello everyone, welcome back. So I am privileged today to be with the amazing Van Hill. He's a father of two and he's an antenatal and postnatal fitness expert, a founder of Carry Fit, which is an amazing baby carrier. I'm here with Van. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much for having me, Lucy. Great to be here. Yes, my pleasure. I'm really excited to delve into the conversation with you today, Van, because I know that we'll have loads of listeners, lots of new parents, um, and understanding, you know, how baby wearing works, what the benefits are, and talking a little bit about how it supports with sleep as well. So I'm really excited to have this conversation. To start with, I'd love to know just a little bit about what brought you on this journey as a father into carry fit. Um, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, certainly. So, um, I mean, Carry Fit has quite a, a, a random and very genuine, you couldn't kind of make it up backstory. So it's always quite an interesting one to share. So I, for 25 years, have been a pre and postnatal PT, um, kind of long before it was trendy and cool. And actually, I'm so old that it was kind of slightly random um, when I first started doing pre and postnatal fitness. And I have my own studio in South London. And lots of mums would come pregnant and then come afterwards with their babies, with their new babies. And I really didn't like the thought of babies crawling around the gym whilst mum was training. Uh, it was distracting to me and to mum. And also it just felt like a bit of a nightmare from a pulling kettlebells over perspective. So the result of that was I would always wear my clients' babies while I trained them. So I would ask them to bring their baby carrier and I would wear their baby and mum would work out and baby was calm and chilled and satiated and all very, very relaxed. And then mum could focus on mum. I got the rather unfortunate nickname, the baby man, because I always had somebody's <laughs> baby strapped to me, which is not wildly useful in your mid and late twenties in South London. I have to be completely honest, um, but it was good professionally and carry fit kind of evolved from that. So sort of 2015 training yet another mum client wearing a baby demonstrating a lunge pat and I was sort of thinking well hang on if I can lunge wearing your baby you can probably lunge wearing your baby and I've got you holding a kettlebell to do your lunges and I'm wearing the weight of your baby so carry fit started kind of from there and I actually roped in a couple of old colleagues from kind of health club days to look at how we might turn it into a live class which was the original carry fit concept and still goes to this day it's a 30 minute postnatal specific group exercise class where everybody moves together and we work through movement patterns that are really beneficial to the postnatal body so it all kind of started there we tested it for about nine months with a load of nct groups and we refined the length of the class the kind of music that we use we even have sensory sounds between the music tracks that most participants aren't even aware of but of course keeps the babies kind of engaged and and happy and so it all sort of took off from there and then the truth of it lucy is we launched it and i was really really excited and then for four months nobody came literally mm. nobody came i stood in I, I begged a place in south london at a really lovely doesn't exist anymore sadly uh, sort of mum and baby club called slice and cupcake in parsons green to let me teach it on their timetable and um and literally no nobody came it was just nobody knew what it was it was quite random yeah. um hmm. and then eventually after about four months one or two people turned up and uh, as you do in when you're in parent land if something's good you tell your mates and yeah. so Two became four and four became eight. And four months after those first couple of people coming in the door, uh, we were teaching four times a week with a massive waiting list and every class wow. was sold out. And from there, it just wow. kind of yeah, went a bit nuts. So obviously got very deep into the baby wearing side of things because that's kind of key to carry fit working. And we would typically see, and I'm sure we'll cover this, that lots of the young babies would go to sleep during class, which is amazing. So I trained in baby wearing as well through that period, did peer supporter. I did uh, also did the consultant training course through the School of Baby Wearing, although I always point out I am not and never have been a baby wearing consultant. I use it, that knowledge in the context yeah. of carry fit. Um, yeah. And we've been really fortunate. We've supported now over 20,000 mostly new mums 
And so we've had wow. huge kind of um, insights at scale in, into what works, how movement interplays with physical recovery for mum, but with sleep for baby and, you know, why they're calm and chilled. So, yeah, through 2017 and to 2021, we partnered with a big global baby wearing brand, which was a real compliment. It was amazing to have them interested in what we were doing. But we'd always had ambition to create our own carrier, one that was specifically yeah. for parents that are more or want to be more active and want to really make activity part of their kind of parenting toolkit and strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so through 2022, we um, developed and then in 2023, we launched uh, Carry Fit Plus, which is our carrier. So it's a, a kind of athleisure baby carrier, as you've seen yourself um yeah. but it also most importantly it comes with a year's access to the carry fit app so that is essentially peloton for parents so it's Amazing. it's workouts it's physio it's medical guidance all about your recovery um and when you buy your carrier you unlock access to the app and the hope with that is that we can just care for parents that are interested in that kind of sweet spot of baby wearing enabling movement and freedom and exercise to really support them in the best way possible so yeah that's the kind of um four minute backstory of of carry fit here we are i love it i love it and i also i'm so glad that you stuck with it when you know like you say you launched and nobody came it's like oh, wait where are all the people this is a brilliant idea and yeah. you know a lot of people would have just gone oh okay no one wants this and dropped it but you stuck with it and I'm really glad you did it and then that just goes to show that sometimes it does just take time for a concept like that where it was innovative and it was different for it to just strike with people and and you know and, and snowball so um yeah, I mean it's, it's yeah. interesting and I think I, I, if it wasn't for two ladies and I, I I will remember their names forever Hannah and Larry forever, yeah they not randomly appeared just at that moment where I was thinking well maybe I am mad maybe actually nobody wants to work out wearing their baby had they not turned up and gone this is amazing um yeah. thank you so much for looking after us I, then who knows so yeah hannah yeah. And, and lowry whose children will be much older now but um were they yeah. to be listening to this i'll always be very grateful they they kind of wandered in the door and took a chance on it really definitely and then to develop your own carrier which obviously would have been the next natural step i have seen it and it's amazing and i wish they were around and when mine were babies in 2010 and 12 um but yeah it's um it's just such a a lovely way to bring that well-being to new mums in we are all about well-being you know physical and mental and obviously sleep is going to give you those two things too both physical and mental well-being and I know that you're you know you're facilitating the ability to move um get exercise but also there there are moves that are going to help to recover the body um yep. and heal the body after birth um and before um and you've also then got the all of the mental well-being that comes with getting that exercise in and like you said about the calm as well the sounds you play that that calms the baby that's i bet mums leave with all the endorphins going um it's, it's, yeah. it's fascinating lucy yeah i mean i think that the, the the, the people's first response to carry fit is always really, really interesting. It's always really telling to me. And there's, there's two mm -hmm. things that we hear really consistently, whether that's from our users that use the app and work out remotely at home, or whether that's people that come to class. And the two things we hear most consistently are, wow, I wasn't expecting it would be such a workout is number mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. which is interesting because carry fit actually stands for cardio and resistance intervals equals getting fit so it's it's Love actually that. the way we program the sessions um and the second thing we hear a lot is i didn't think it would be such a calm environment all the babies are so chilled or one of the things we hear which is always fascinating is why are the babies all so chilled mm -hmm. because if you are finding your way with baby wearing or well, often we find a lot of people have come for a workout because perhaps they've tried other things or they just want somewhere that is specifically for new mums and it's that kind of environment. So actually they've come for the workout more than they've come for the baby wearing support. And so the baby wearing is a bit of an unknown and the workout's a bit more of a known. So we hear it a lot, why are the babies so 
chilled or it's amazing that the babies are also chilled and typically when we have you know 10 to 15 people in the live class or uh, and we might have baby ages there from eight weeks to 18 months it's quite normal in carry fit but they are all chilled and what we've done is we've kind of honed down everything we need to know at every age and stage to maximize the chance that our pre-class routine and what we're advising mums in terms of preparation for baby pre-class feeding them layering them down getting them in good carriers in good positions all that kind of stuff makes a real difference and the knock on then that we see is that people leave carry fit much more confident about baby wearing much more knowledgeable about how to get the most out of it and that then as you said it feeds into this amazing kind of circle of good mental health we know carry fit in two different studies because we've opened ourselves up twice to independent study is proven to positively impact postnatal depression at clinical level so that's amazing. amazing. Um, and a lot of that is because you've got this tool all of a sudden that you know how it works, you know how your baby responds to it. And as a parent, it gives you another option for movement, for calm, for sleep. Um, we often kind of, we, we kind of say it semi in jest, but we mean it very, very seriously. And we want it to kind of go in, into people's psyche is that if all else is failing on any given day, feed them, stick them in their carrier and just move. Doesn't matter, yeah. just go for a walk, walk around the house. We've all yeah. done like the baby wearing rock, right? Where you kind of put yeah. your baby in the barrier and you, you sort of jig yeah. like you're on the side of a dance floor, but you're 70 all of a sudden. You kind of do that. Yeah. And it's because it works. So it, it gives people this amazing tool to really kind of support their parenting in a different way. And I bet, I mean, I'm just picturing now, I'm somebody who, if I feel like I'm losing control, I clean or tidy because there's something I can control, right? And and sometimes as new mums, we can get quite frustrated because we can't control everything, especially with a brand new human who we're trying to figure out, especially first time round. We're trying to figure out what, what does this cry mean and what do they need? And oh my gosh, everything's a mess and you do all the things. And then sometimes just by doing something that you feel you do have control of can help you feel better. And I'm just picturing now, like if I'd had this, I would have been like, right, put the baby in the carrier and vacuum or do some cleaning or sort something out because then I'm feeling, I'm just feeling like I've regained a little bit of control. I can breathe and, you know, not every, some people won't relate to that and will go, what, are you mad? Go for a walk yeah. then or whatever works for you. But I hear you and calm mum, calm baby, right? Yeah, massively. And I, I think, you know, one of the things that's really interesting with it is, is I think the modern world and all the kind of gadgets and gizmos we can get for a baby now, and we've all been there, right? My, my kids are 11 and 8, so not dissimilar age from yours. You know, you, you buy so much stuff. And actually, when you look back, you probably think there's four or five things that you used a lot of all the stuff you probably bought and, and just chose and thought was going to be really important. Actually, there's things that all parents end up using more. And I think... You know, often when we, since we launched with John Lewis last year, we see that when people come into into store, for example, you know, the big three on people's mind are buggy and car seat and then carrier is always number three. But actually, somewhere in there, the kind of miracle and majesty of evolution and, and what a mum and a baby share is lost a little bit because... We give birth, ladies give birth to carried young. They're designed to be attached to on their primary caregiver for most of those early years and months, certainly those very formative months. And that's why on an evolutionary point, on a brain chemistry point, it has such an immediate impact to calm baby. And as you just said, if you've got a calm baby, it's so much easier to be a calm parent. Everything just works better and I think sometimes we, we 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 kind of with all the stuff we can get now all the shiny kind of object syndrome we forget that the simple act of holding your baby yeah. is the easiest way to calm them down and calm you down and the yeah. most kind of convenient way to hold your baby is in a carrier sling or a wrap because then your hands free so you get the double win of still being able to do something else, go somewhere else. And if you look at cultures around the world, 
you know, most babies and most cultures in other countries um, will wear their baby for significant periods of time every single day, um, yeah. which always is, leads to that interesting question that we hear a lot is, can my baby stay in the how how long can my baby stay in the, in the carrier and is it okay for my baby to be asleep in the carrier and for how long and of course they're mm -hmm. just not questions that crop up in other parts of the world mm. yes absolutely it's where your baby's supposed to be and as i'm sure we'll get into you know good sleep in a carrier can help sleep across the board good sleep's absolutely. kind of good sleep right absolutely and i'm also just picturing the push postural benefits too to carriers because I know I had like I started to find myself hunched over more than I ever had I always had really, really great posture and then I was like oh, getting into awkward positions so I had big babies they were heavy whereas if actually you're carrying them correctly um like you said yeah. with your hands free you yeah, can still cuddle really, them but you've got yeah it's a really yeah. good point I mean I think a lot of people think that um, and then, and generally it's down to not quite understanding how a carrier should fit is that a carrier mm. could hurt your back particularly is the old kind of all oh, that that definitely looks like it'll hurt my back but actually if you think logically through the biomechanics of it when you wear a baby in a well-fitted carrier load is central if you look at how babies tuck their knees up and spread their arms when you put them on the back on their floor they're adopting the position they want to be in on your torso so they, they kind of fit beautifully ergonomically to mum's body, dad's body. Um, and actually, therefore, centrally placed load is a bit less burdensome on the body and keeps everything a bit more, bit more organised. And actually, most of the time when we hear that, there's, there's kind of three very simple. If people only take one thing away from this in terms of their baby wearing, take the next 60 seconds away from this. Uh, from this episode okay. with you and that's Listen high <laughs> tight and visible if you can't readily kiss the top of your baby's head in a carrier they are too low and too loose in the carrier and on your body and that means that it'll be pulling into the wrong parts of your body so simply put your hand flat underneath their bum on the outside of the carrier bring their head up until you can kiss it and then look for the slack in the straps and particularly in a structured carrier, a Bjorn, an Ergo, even ours to a degree, although ours is slightly harder to get wrong because of the, the way it's constructed. But lots of structured carriers just look for the slack in the straps. And if you find slack, tighten it up and immediately maybe we'll feel lighter and more comfortable. So if you only do one thing on the back of this and you think that bloke talked an awful lot, but I can remember 60 seconds, remember high, tight and visible. And that's the easiest way to get any carrier more comfortable. Yeah, that's brilliant advice. Thank you. And it's lovely that they're right there at kissable level, which is just well, that's a really easy there, way to remember it. Of, yeah, they're there for lots of developmental reasons. It's the safest. We know that from all the research, but also in terms of their developing eyesight, we know kind of 10 centimetres is the sweet spot. Yeah. So if they're too low, yeah. they can't see your face, your eyes. They can't yeah. see you as readily. So they can't learn in a kind of speech and language and social interaction capacity quite mm. as well so there's lots of great reasons both safety and developmental to kind of think high mm. tight and visible but yeah it's also you get to smell the top of their head and you know I think most parents can readily recall the smell oh, of yeah. their new baby's head it's one of those quite kind of uh, yeah, yeah quite visceral things uh, and you know as somebody that's got older children, I can still tell who's who from the smell of the top of their head, you know, to this yeah, day. Yeah. It is, you know, it's one of those real kind of parenting things. Um, so yeah, get them nice and high and tight. Love that, I love that. You touched a bit there on as well, um, sleep. And we were talking about how long can they be in a carrier and that natural place for them to be. Oh my goodness, I wish this information was around, honestly, when mine were little or more readily understood. Because it's still now really misunderstood in our world with sleep consulting and supporting parents with sleep that this is okay. You know, there's the concept of, well, surely you must put them down. You must create the separation in order for them to sleep independently. And I want to bust that myth right now because that just simply is not true. Um, and like you said, actually catching those Zs in the day and sleeping on you and feeling safe and secure is going to actually benefit 
the independent sleep at night time and being able to place them down and I'm not going to go into like all of the night sleep protocols I I can imagine some parents thinking yeah but if I do this are they going to need to be on me all night long um because you know I need to sleep too and yeah, I, I know that that's not true um, and that you can do this safely in a day and have your nighttime practices to help your baby to feel perfectly safe, perfectly happy, being placed down in their own sleep space, yeah. probably quite near you. But, you know, that they're in their own sleep space at nighttime and it not disrupt that. And I mean, I know that's totally possible. Would it, what would you say to somebody if they had those worries? Right. So, I mean, what I would say is that there's really, really good, robust and loads of it science that supports that contact naps are hugely beneficial in all kinds of ways. And and so I guess I'll I'll give a kind of I'll give an overview of of all of that, because it's really it's really, really interesting. And I think that the kind of modern notion is, oh, am I am I making a rod for my own back? Is the one Mm, kind of always here. They're going to always want to be on me to sleep. Okay, so if we look first off at kind of baby's brain and chemistry and what's going on with their brain, they're evolved to be petrified to be put down because they'll be eaten. Yeah. That's our kind of yeah. you know, <laughs> thousands of year old brain. All the dangers occur when they're not attached to their primary caregiver. So they're, they mm-hmm. can be stressed and that's why sometimes they don't settle or they settle far easier on you. Now, that's really fascinating for two reasons, not only because then it's a great way we know we can settle baby, let's have some extra cuddles and extra contact and get them calm, because if you're calm, you're going to sleep better. But also it's why the movement bit works so well. So babies feel even calmer when they're on the move, because they're not staying in one place. So they are less under threat from being eaten, stolen, all those things that are so ingrained in our brain from thousands of years ago so movement plus contact will will calm a baby and and help them sleep now the reality of that for most parents in a kind of modern context is that's neither practical nor potentially something that they wish to do and and have every nap contact co-sleeping all those kind of things so for me it's always about how do we weave all those amazing benefits for baby's brain and system and vestibular system thermoregulation and heartbeat how do we weave all of that into kind of a modern parenting setting so the easy way to explain that is is i would go to something called attachment theory and secure attachment so if we can meet that need of a baby to feel securely attached to its primary caregiver we are basically raising a more chilled, calmer, more confident baby when they're not attached to us. And that feeds directly yeah. into every aspect of their life. Now, again, back to like the practicalities of baby wearing. Baby wearing is a really easy, low effort way to meet the need for secure attachment while still being able to do stuff for yourself. So babies getting all their needs met because they're on you. But you can go shopping, you can go for coffee, you can walk around the park, you can do a workout. You can just continue about your day whilst baby is getting exactly what they are evolved to need and, and want from you. So it's it's blending in the use of your yeah. carrier and contact naps are part of that into then, well, they might be moving to sleep in their own room. Uh, they might be, we might want them sometimes to sleep in a buggy because we're going out for dinner whatever it might be it's giving them that sense of secure attachment so that when they are not attached to you actually what you're doing is giving them a far enhanced chance of settling on their own of not worrying that they've not had that need met that day Um, and it's really it's a really kind of like baby wearing blows my mind lucy like what it does to to the wearer Mm -hmm um you know and and for baby and i think as well it's it's if i can touch briefly as a dad on what it does for dads please do definitely yeah yeah there's a there's a part of kind of baby wearing that supports something called caregiver sensitivity so you you mentioned earlier and it was really interesting you know what does this noise mean what does that cry mean what does this snuffle mean 
And actually, as dads, often we are a little bit slower to interpret those noises because we don't have the same physical connection early on, particularly if mum's feeding and things like that. And so baby wearing can help accelerate. And this can be for grandparents. This can be for, you know, non-birthing partners, whatever your familial setup. The other or other primary caregivers, if they baby wear, they're going to more quickly and more readily be able to recognize those noises, squirms, movements. But importantly, baby is going to more quickly recognize them as another place to have a secure attachment. Now, that in itself is unbelievably liberating because it means then instead of all the pressure being on mum to settle mm. baby when they're grizzly, dad can help, granny can help, grandpa can help, best mate can help. So, again, using the carrier as a tool to foster these well-known kind of benefits can really help mm. unburden the whole family set up and give you kind of a suite of, of tools. But mainly you're teeing up your baby's brain to be a really successful, socially confident. And interestingly, the research tells us those children with good secure attachment are more secure to explore the world independently when the time comes. So it is the very inverse of making a rod for your own back. You will have the 18 month old that goes toddling into play group thinking, yep, yeah, I'm gonna rock this joint rather than the kind of stage seven clinger that's crawling up your leg because they know yeah. where their secure attachment lies. They know where their port in a storm is and they don't need to have that. They're not, they're not ever questioning that, that basic human instinct, that need. So it's fascinating. I know that was quite a lot. Yeah. It, no, I love a that. Fascinating topic. It's really, really eloquently put. And actually um, the whole, this whole secure attachment um, I think misconception that you, you see out there where um, we get this a lot with sleep and parents are confused and they think that it's, you know, the, the permanently attaching to my baby and, you know, nighttime responses, we get this and, and things meeting their needs. It can often give, be misread. And it's like, hang on, this isn't actually meeting the need. This is just what you think is going to make them stop crying. But actually, when we meet the needs properly, like you say, the secure attachment is going to lead to more independence. The secure attached toddler can be dropped off at nursery and say bye happily because they know you're coming back. And, yeah. you know, secure attachment develops that trust. And like, we talk about this with the early stages of um, peekaboo um, and object permanence development and explaining that, you know, or showing little one that, um, yep, I go, but look, I come back. Or in parenting, I mean, gosh, with your children their age, and I know with mine, you know, that knowing you mean what you say. So just all kinds of parenting. If we're consistent, the message that we give to babies and even our teenagers is I, I'm sticking to this because I mean what I say, but what that's going to create is trust that you yeah. can count on me, that you can rely on your primary caregiver, even when it's saying no to those sweets at the supermarket checkout and you don't like the answer, you can count on me to stick to my guns and mean what I say, because I know it's in your best interest. So there isn't the, the tensions or that insecurity um, of not knowing where they stand. And like you see this throughout parenthood. And I think when they are teeny tiny babies, which we can't spoil and we're not going to give sweets to and so on, we don't want to say no to anything. And I think people sometimes misconstrue um, what secure attachment is and uh, yeah, really reading and understanding what a baby needs. And, and it's about building that trust and knowing that you can, I love that, pass them over to another caregiver and they're okay. You know, yeah. say, say goodbye when you have to go to work and they're okay because then they start to realise that you come back and it's, that pattern and I really love the way you explained that with with this That's concept um, I think there's one more brilliant one there that you mentioned nursery pickup so, mm. so this is one we talk about quite a lot actually and again there's there's some really brilliant research out there and, and there's people that talk about this um, far more kind of uh, eloquently than I do in in the baby wearing world um, I think of, of, of Zoe particularly Hannah Wallace th those kind of guys but Nursery pickup, so that so that transition point when you're putting a baby into childcare can be really really tricky, right? Testing for everybody, yeah. 
but it's also yeah. arguably the second stage of really impactful baby wearing where it can bail you both out so if you've got like a 12 month old and you're starting to take them to nursery childcare, perhaps you're returning to work whatever it might be don't take them in the buggy take them and collect them in the carrier so that you have that 10 minutes whatever it is to get there of totally secure they've got you entirely to themselves attachment and then when you pick them up rather than expecting them to remain detached from you which they've just been for the morning or the afternoon or whatever it might be allow them to immediately come back into the carrier and that kind of closeness and then watch how much more chilled the rest of the day becomes because their heightened sense of you it's like that elongated peekaboo right you've just reappeared mm. they've not seen you for hours you are their absolute world they've been really really good they've smashed it at nursery everyone says oh what a cutie pie how good brilliant stick them back in the carrier and it will massively change how the rest of every day plays out because you're going to immediately happening. calm them and you're going to immediately meet their desperate need to be back in your embrace. So just That's again, sim simply using the carrier as a tool, you've got to get yeah. them to and from nursery or whatever it might be, childcare. Mm -hmm. Use the carrier instead of a buggy. It's the second great stage of baby wear. Mm -hmm. And we talk about it loads. When your baby's 12 months plus, lots of people think, oh, my baby wearing days are done. They're massive. They're starting to move independently. No, absolutely. It is possibly even more critical and you will also find and i think this is one of the most special things your much bigger baby will still if you use the carrier very readily nap on you in the daytime mm. and that is that's that's kind of beyond useful that's slightly getting into magic you are creating something that lasts forever you won't remember pushing a buggy to and from nursery when you're 80 but you will remember what your 18 month old felt like nestled into you, yeah. sleeping, completely connected to you, what they smelt like, what they felt like, how their body had gone from newborn and very flimsy to this little, you know, roughy tufty sort of toddler. So it, it, it's an amazing thing to try and think not just about baby wearing as a newborn thing, but how it evolves. And it's one of the things we talk about a lot in the Carry Fit app is what do we what strategies do we have to get the most out of baby wearing developmentally for baby impact wise for parents and then just practically from like how can we use it to make parent life a bit easier so yes if there was a second snippet to take from Vern's waffle it would be if you've got a bigger baby take them to nursery and pick them up from nursery in your carrier and I guarantee your days will be more chilled and even if you go in the car, from car to and back, Absolutely. even just, that just bit is that just yeah. pop, just pop them in, or or even if it's you know even if you've got a hundred yards to walk, two hundred yards, whatever yeah. it is, do it if you can do it, babe in arms, great, but pop them in the carrier, yeah, and just yeah. just kind of understand that when you have been out of sight for an extended period of time, they don't their needs are incredibly simple. They just want you. That, I mean, yeah. that is that is it. They just want you. And it might be for 10 minutes to make them really calm for the rest of the day. It might be, as, as we used to do, they finish childcare and you want to get them home for a nap because they're absolutely zonked. Yeah. They're more likely to have a really good quality nap if you give them a big hug and a cuddle before it. And then you can, yeah. you know, they'll nap wherever you've set up the habit to nap. But, yeah, just understanding how, again, baby wearing can make that those transition points a bit more practical can be really useful. I can um, I can imagine also how that further helps to instill that sense of trust of the return of you, you know, that smell, that feel. It's like, I had it, it went for a while, it came back. And then you start to remember that every time it goes, you start to go, I know it comes back again because I'm starting to get this pattern now. Is that? Well, yeah, yeah. It, 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 again, it lowers stress for both of you yeah. actually, for, for baby and, and for wearer. But also it does really yeah. reinforce that habit of, this is absolutely, it's absolutely yeah. fine when mummy or daddy or granny or whoever says, I'll see you in three hours. 
Now, they won't even yeah. know what three hours means. They know at some point you're going to come back, but they know you mean come it. Back. And they also know yeah. that when you come back, they get your attention and contact. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause They're not, that, there's that no doubts. The, that is the, the, for me, that is the, the, the genius of baby wearing in the modern world is so much of the modern world distracts us divides us takes our attention in different ways from a baby's point of view if they've got you right here you know they're on you in the carrier they have they have got your attention and that is that is great and if you're chatting with mates if you're even if you're working it, we see some glorious pictures of 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 mums and dads working with their babies in the carrier baby doesn't know you're working they just think i've got you you're mine i'm right on you perfect yeah. So it just it opens up what baby needs and allows that to merge with rather than totally dominate what we need as parents. Yeah. And so actually, rather than sort of giving less balance to your life as a parent, it can give much more balance to yeah. your life as a parent. Um, yeah. and, and I mean, I think the if I was going to add one final thing is you don't get the baby wearing days back. Um, I know, know, I wish I could. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. You, you don't. I mean, I, I, I said that on a live stream the other day, and, and I know it's kind of hit the spot for a few people that have, you know, they've done carry fit with two or three children, and kind of this might be their their last time doing it. And it's, um, you know, you don't get those baby wearing days back, but doing it, doing it at the start can have an incredible impact on on that child's future. Um, and on mm. on how they navigate the world when they when they get older. I can certainly see that relationship as well is with them um, with sleep and with night times and putting them down and that whole that that period of separation look, look a lot like the nursery drop off. It's like okay, this is happening now and then I'm going to come back and all obviously all of the other things we teach and how we help them to feel really happy and calm and confident with that. It just feeds in and it's certainly something that. Um, I'm going to be recommending more and more to and hopefully all of our listeners have, have taken a lot from this. And I really have enjoyed going into the, the science and the psychology of this with you as well, Bern, because I think it's so everyone now wants to know why. Why? Why does this work? How does this help? What's the impact? And I think it's it's great to it's share. It's really that. interesting, right? Because lots of lots of parents increasingly in the modern world, they, they, they always we all want to think we're all I think as parents, we're conditioned to think we want to do the absolute best for our children to give them a leg mm. up in life. Yeah. And again, there's lots of kind of modern takes on that, you know, and you can delve as deep as you want to. But actually, the simp simplest thing we can do that we know, and there's a brilliant study that started in the 70s ran for 30 years, you know, babies that had secure attachment, were more successful 30 year olds than all their peers measured across financial, social, emotional, mental health, relationship scores, like it was bonkers. So actually, if we want our children to kind of be high performers, outperform their peers, have the happy, successful lives we wish for them, the simplest yeah. thing we can do in that first 12 months, 18 months is give them secure attachment. And the modern way yeah. of doing that is wear them in a baby carrier. You know, yeah. simple as that. And it's cool. Like, yeah. I, you know, James Bond wears his baby, Lucy. I mean, what more do you need to know? I mean, come on. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. And I really hope that um, one of my missions in, in the Sleep Nanny is to um, quash these ideas that you can't get a baby to sleep independently and practice secure attachment and I you know that just simply is not true and um I'm hoping that this you know this episode with you will help to you know join those things together and show how actually you can do all of those things and actually then set the foundation for really great health um physical health mental health and well-being for the whole family um it's been an absolute pleasure to talk about this with you today Ron. if people nice want to, to find you ask you a question or check out carry fit like where's the best place for us to send them um so if you want to ask us a question you can always come and dm us on instagram or facebook we're really quick to respond we get questions every day about baby wearing and fitness and all sorts of interesting stuff um and you can see everything that we do on the website which is getcarryfit.com G E T C A R I F I T dot com. Um, but yeah, look us up on socials and you will immediately get the flavour of kind of 
where baby wearing meets movement because <laughs> um, it's it's yeah. a, it's not the stillest group of uh, baby wearing mums you've ever seen when they're all in in class or working out at home so no it's 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 wonderful we're we're really um we're very grateful for the amazing kind of community we're building and we feel unbelievably proud that we've managed to launch a carrier that kind of fosters all of that and and makes mums more comfortable yeah. when they're moving baby wearing and and also yeah. helps dads as well. I mean, I have to say, I you know, I, I had a fair input into the carrier and one of the things I wanted to get rid of was hard to reach straps for inflexible dads. So there's nothing to do up at the back. It's kind of super simple and yeah, we're really proud of it. it so is. yeah, come and come and check it out, come and ask a question. We do lots of live stuff across um across YouTube and socials. So yeah, amazing. It'd be amazing. And thanks very much well, for having me, Lucy. It's a, it's great to chat. Oh, it's been a pleasure it's an absolute pleasure we'll put those links in the show notes as well so people can easily find you and um i know you're at the baby show as well so if anyone in the uk is listening and comes to one of the shows they'll be able to come and find you and check yep. out the carrier for themselves won't they so um, they will yeah we'll be uh yeah. we'll be at all the baby shows this year um it was great yeah. i mean it was one of the things i enjoyed most about last year was the first time we'd done yeah. one of the baby shows and meeting that many really excited yeah. like parents to be and new parents yeah um it was just incredible and chatting to them whether they were in our carrier or trying it on or lots turned up in other carriers just yeah. with general questions I mean it's just it's so it, it's there's something very energizing about being around babies and new parents when they're yeah. excited about it and you know yeah. I'm sure you've find and feel that as well it's a very special part of somebody's life to be briefly involved yeah. in um, so we're very yeah. very privileged to be doing what we're doing and enjoying it so much oh and you're doing an amazing amazing job so thank you keep doing thank it you. and i'll see you at the next show um and yeah we'll talk to you soon thanks so much Fern. pleasure thanks lucy